Hey guys, Macabre Mary here. Recently I had the opportunity to interview actor, writer, and producer Laura Buckles. She's known for her work in Isolation Inn, Dead in the Head, and now Broken, which came out October 19th, 2021. This Canadian indie film is classified as a crime drama thriller, where we follow our protagonist, or anti-hero, Brian. In this movie, what starts as just another delivery becomes the catalyst for life-shattering trouble. With Brian injured and evidence mounting against them, three friends find themselves running from the law. In a panic, Brian turns to his mentor and ringleader, Bear, and together they come up with a perfect scheme of betrayal and murder. Huh. So good morning. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, no how are you doing this morning? I'm very good, thanks. Good, good, good. <laughs> how about you? I am. I'm awake, so there's the. <laughs> I mean, I like to set bars real low, so I can just step over them. So, I'm I'm right there with you. Um, so you're you're from California. Um, I'm in California now. In I'm California. originally I am originally from Colorado. Oh, nice. Um, and then California by way of many other cities, states, and, and, and countries. So that's funny because I'm actually I grew up in California. Um, I live in Alaska now, of all places. <laughs> <laughs> I have uh, I have friends who did who, who came the other way, grew up in Alaska, then came down to California, lived here for years. Now they're in Colorado, so it's like they're <laughs> they did the exact opposite route. Exactly. It's like, but you went to someplace cold. I don't understand. Oh, that's awesome. So I appreciate you being here with me today. Um, I, I don't often get uh, requests to do interviews. And so this, this is awesome. I, I love doing these things. Um, <laughs> I, I very much enjoyed the movie too. So this, this is pretty awesome. Um, That's awesome. I'm glad you got a chance to see it <laughs> yeah. um, and, and enjoyed it. So I'm going to ask you questions about like the producing aspect of it first, and then I'll ask you questions about your, your acting side of it. Great. Um, now you have a more unique view of this film uh, because you were not only a producer and a writer, but you also acted in it. Um, you co-produced this project with Patrick Phillips. I'm assuming there was a little bit of a division of labor there, if I'm not wrong. Definitely. Um, this is a project that Patrick has uh, had in his mind and in his heart for a very long time. And we actually tried to, I mean, well, we, we did actually make a version of this story prior to this one um, that, you know, it's sort of like your first pancake. Your first pancake is always a well, it's always just horrible. It's, it's, it's just guinea pig. Yeah. It's the guinea pig. It's like lopsided and burned on one side and raw on the other. But you gotta make that first pancake to to keep keep going and make, you know, better pancakes. So yeah. we we believe this one is the better pancake. <laughs> but, it's it a very nicely shaped pancake. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this is this is our hope and dream. Uh so Patrick had the idea in his head and um when he was ready to retell the story, uh, kind of handed over the writing of it. He had he had molded it into the story, and then Keith and I took that and 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 got pen to paper, with finger to type to keyboard, and started really like fleshing it out. Yeah. Um, so that was the first division of labor, and good on Patrick for being able to step back from the writing aspect and allow us to take his vision and then create our own story out of it. Yeah, I can't imagine that's that'd be hard to give your baby away. <laughs> like, yeah, so he's like sending it to to camp for eight weeks or something. Yeah, comes back, <laughs> came back a man. No. <laughs> But uh, so that was the first division of labor. And he was very clear from the beginning that he wanted to direct this. This is a story that was close to his heart and he knew what he wanted to see on screen. Um, so that was an easy handoff after that, uh, which was great. And then what was lovely for me is I, pr I produce a number of projects that I've acted in and Patrick was very clear and supportive about 
when I'm on set as an actor, I'm not there as a producer. I'm not there as a writer. Okay. I'm there to act and to, and to be, you know, facilitate that part of the story, um, which was very nice and very comforting, especially when things, you know, as they tend to do on independent film sets start to go wrong. Yeah. Um, and I could be like, ah, no, no problem. I'm going to be over here. Good. One hat at a time kind of thing. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Um, and um, at, at, so as a producer though, like how, obviously I've never produced a film. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about like the role that you played on set as a producer? Sure. So producing is an interesting animal because basically you are just facilitating from start to finish every aspect, especially with a, a smaller film or an independent film every single aspect of it. So in one moment, you may be looking, you know, the 30 foot view of sort of, um, you know, the workflow all the way into post-production and beyond. And the next moment you are worrying about the fact that uh, you've run out of toilet paper on set. And it's, it's, it's a, this real give and take and flow of finding those things. We had um, anything from uh, locations that fell through literally while we were arriving at them to um to issues with our next location or um cars that wouldn't start we filmed in edmonton which chilly there <laughs> um, and we were filming in oh uh, december january oh geez i even remember always the coldest cold. months <laughs> yeah so you know even uh, everything from those kinds of bigger things that would be something on the day of set to, to this, the smaller stuff of making sure the wardrobe department had everything and was set and ready to go. And, the, and our actors were there and getting their contracts through. And, um, so it's, it's, it's like hurting wet, angry kittens. Um, and um, so like, aside from like the daily tasks and, and that kind of stuff, um, you also deal with like more of like the budget issues and the financial stuff, right? Um, I'm, I'm sure that can be kind of a tasking thing, trying to gather like investors or financing the film. Um, how did you and Patrick sell this as a potential or two pit, excuse me, wow, well, I can't talk. How did you sell this to potential investors? Well, it's an interesting, getting money for films is interesting because everybody loves the idea of financing a film in the abstract. But yeah. when you come down to it, people don't love the idea of, you know, handing over money to something that isn't a slam dunk yeah. and films never are a slam dunk. No. Uh, you don't, you can't, I, even though people always believe they can tell what, what movie is going to make money, uh, especially at studios, you just don't know. You just don't know if the combination of actors and story and script and director and all of those things that go in ed editor, editors are huge, go into it, um, is going to be telling a story that's going to resonate with enough people. Yeah. to make it a success. So I have a odd approach to finding money and um, which is I tend to try and talk people out of financing it uh, because if they come on board in a financial sense, knowing that, knowing the pitfalls, then I, I truly believe they're going to stay, they're going to keep their money in, they're going to bring their money to the project. If they come on board with this sort of aspect of like, oh, it's going to be great. And I'm going to be on a red carpet and people are going to be like, oh, I love your movie and I'm going to make millions of dollars. Then about day two into pre-production, they're suddenly going to be like, wow, I have a flight to catch with my bank, you know, <laughs> just, you know, so it's an interesting thing. So, but to actually get to your actual question, one of the things, um, that we realized, Patrick and I realized, uh, especially Patrick, was as we were trying to sell this film and the fact that it was, it is a truly tiny budget movie. Uh, most of the people who we could get interested in it 
wanted it to be a larger budget. They wanted to put more money into it than we wanted to uh, to, to make the movie for, uh, which sounds weird, right? You think, oh, they're offering you lots of money. Why wouldn't you take it? But one of the things that happens with that is the more money someone puts in, the more control they want over it. So yeah. now suddenly they're like, you know, we'll give you $500,000, but only if Brad Pitt's involved, which is great, except, you know, that <laughs> is more than yeah. the entire budget. Exactly. $500,000 $500, would never get Brad Pitt, unfortunately. Exactly. So at some point in the process, and, and we'd approach some people and there was definitely interest, but again, there, there were uh, people who, who wanted more control than Patrick especially wanted to give over since this was, as you said, his baby. And, yeah. you know, we, this was our, our second time coming through to try and tell the story. Patrick decided that he was going to, for the most part, um, invest in his, himself and in, invest in this story. And he um, self-financed a lot of the film. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. That 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 makes it a whole different animal right there because that it, turns it from just a passion project to literally like what breaks your bank if it doesn't work um so and and i've i've actually talked to other um well other film creators i guess he was a director writer and actor <laughs> and he also produced <laughs> um, yeah, but yeah, no, no, well. <laughs> yeah <exactly. laughs> but um yeah, no, it's it's always that that stressful, like waiting to see, like bated breath if this is gonna actually work. And honestly, I, I think this I think this movie is is good. It's it's really good, and I think it's gonna it's gonna work. I think for Thank a lot you. of people. Yeah. Um, now, um, something that I just found out um, is that Broken actually ended up winning best original score, best sound design, but was also nominated for 10 other categories in the Hollywood North Films, uh, North Films, North, <laughs> my brain, in the Hollywood <laughs> North Film Awards, and um, then was also a winner of dramatic original and best dramatic feature for World Fest Houston, correct? Yeah, that's right. How, we, how did it feel to, to have that happen? Uh, well, amazing you know you always say it's a, it's a it's an honor just to be nominated and it is yeah winning things is also very much an honor um and it's nice to have that recognition uh especially as you're you know this again passion project tiny little film we're really pushing it we really believed in the cast and the and the crew was amazing and and um and it was hard to finish. So when you get all of that together and you put you start to put it out there and we decided that we would go film festival route um, while looking for distribution for the film. And you start to, uh, you know, obviously you you throw your hat kind of over the fence for some of the, the larger film festivals, some of yeah. the film festivals that, that are looking. But when you start to get any feedback at all, you're just, so excited even when they're like we love the film but it doesn't really work in our you know in in our festival for whatever yeah. reason it's like still like yes you still uh, liked it <laughs> still liked it i don't care if you're lying to me <laughs> uh so it, it's it it is rewarding on a lot of levels yeah. you know as an actor it was rewarding and as a writer it was rewarding as a producer you start to you're always, you know, looking one step ahead. So as a producer, every time you get something like that, it's a little more recognition, a little, a little higher uh, view, more people can see it. Mm -hmm. And, um, and you start to think, okay, well, you know, maybe this distribution thing is, is going to be possible and you start to move it that way. So it's, it's exciting as the writer and the, and the actor, and then as the producer, it's like, this is great. Now I've got more more nail biting to do. That's that is funny though. Um, it's because I I'm sure it was very welcome, to, a very welcome outcome to receive the awards and the nominations. But also I can I can understand how that would put a little bit more pressure 
also on the um the production end of that. exactly exactly <laughs> and we went into uh the first part of the film festival without a completely finished film it was in post-production but it was going through the last of it of the sound and the last of the uh, you know it, there's a thing that you have to do it's called deliverables so after you've got your film completely shot and edited and you're getting the sound mix and all of that you then have to go back and make sure that you you have these things that you need to deliver in order for people to show the film or mm -hmm. for um the company to distribute the film and you know so that they can make subtitles and so that they can dub into other languages and yeah. um, all of that. So we were still getting all of our deliberal deliverables together. So it was like, yay, we won. And now they're gonna probably want, they're, they're gonna wanna show it or we were accepted. Now they're gonna wanna show it. We better make sure we've got the color correction right on this. So that it was, you know, a lot yeah. of up and down. I uh, totally get that. That's that's awesome. It, I mean, it's obviously it's all a process, right? Always. Every time you think you're at the end, you're like, oh, <laughs> either we're, we, we're stupid enough to, to forget what we went through and we start the process all over or the process starts for us anyway. So. <laughs> and I mean, I, I kind of have a little idea of what you're talking about as far as like, once you feel like you're finished, there's always something else that you maybe forgot or didn't see. Um, I obviously, I, I'm not in the, the film industry whatsoever, so I don't have that kind of intense pressure. But like when I edit my videos, for example, it's like, oh, this is totally ready to post. Let me watch it one more time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> oh, wait. Like, what just happened there? Exactly. You literally cannot see my face. Right. It's like, why is there a huge portion of this video just suddenly missing? <laughs> I guess it didn't want to render. Okay. Right. <laughs> yep. It's like my life. Half the time I'm like, oh, my entire life is hanging on render. Great. <laughs> now, as as a, a fellow writer, like how how often do you get your hands in the writing portion of things as like a producer? Do you often do writing for the movies? So it it depends where in the process I'm brought in um, and what else is going on. I've been very lucky in terms of writing things that um, you know, Patrick was excited by some of, of the writing that I did uh, of some films. And so he, he brought those films into, um, into Opine, which is, his, which is our company, his company and now our company um, to, to produce. And from that, I was then able to find other opportunities to write. Um, I also do writing for is this very strange niche market um, of ethics videos. So industrial videos with an ethics spin that every kind of large company that has a government contract needs and other things like that. Um, so that also allowed me to um, really learn the craft of, of script writing mm -hmm. um, and dialogue. Because yeah. when you are trying to make lawyer industrial speak sound like something a human being says, uh, you got you you get pretty creative. Oh, yeah. You get pretty good at the at, at the dialogue. So. Um, so that was the sort of weird little niche that I, I spun off to in some ways, but it was also a great gift so that when um, somebody brings me on as a producer and they need some edits or something like that, uh, I can do those things, I you know, full package. I don't have to go out and find somebody who also understands the story and, yeah. and, and nurture that along. And then there's also the, the fact that you had to pay an extra person too, which, you know, like, I, I feel like, um, I, I really do understand that because the, the, the book that me and my partner actually came out with, um, uh, normally you'd have an editor, you'd have an art director, you'd have, you know, that was all me. Yes, exactly. <laughs> was, was all me. <laughs> I, t I, t I tend to make the joke that, uh, independent films, really small independent films 
go so far in that direction that they become dependent again on the one, like on the one person who's doing it, right? So it's like, oh, it's an independent film. No, that film was completely 100% dependent on me <laughs> and, or on me and Pat, like, right? That yeah. book was not an independent book. It was completely no. dependent on you. Exactly. If if I hadn't put all the that blood, sweat and tears into that, it wouldn't happen. And I'm sure you can say the same for the, this movie. Like I, and I mean, I, I can tell that a lot of heart went into this movie too. It, so it's it's very nice to see this kind of thing happen with an independent film, especially because like you expect it from Hollywood, like, oh, these are great actors. They get paid millions of dollars. Like, obviously they're gonna be quality, but independent films aren't always like that. This one is. even <laughs> yeah even with the best intentions yeah because you've got so many variables and you know and that that there's that triangle you can do something you can get quality you, or you can do it fast or yeah. you can um do it expensive and you have to give up you can only give up one of those things or everything collapses um and in an independent film you know always you're always already having having given up um, it being expensive. So you just yeah. can't throw money at, a, at an issue or a problem. And it really, you know, is blood, sweat, and tears. Um, Pat, so when we were filming, we had um, the middle chunk of the movie. And when people see it, they'll understand this more. So the, the entire middle chunk of that of the film, we went and filmed in Edmonton with the idea that the beginning and end, which needed to be in a different season, yeah. were gonna be uh were gonna be shot later on. We had some funding available that we were gonna use to shoot that. That funding fell through. I in some sort of manic episode said, okay, I have a completely different idea for the beginning and, and, and end of this film, Patrick, in order for us to be able to get this done. And and rewrote into what is the interrogation scene. Oh. So that interrogation scene didn't exist until after we shot the bulk of the movie. Um, That's interesting because that yeah. leads into everything. I, yeah. I, I kind of like that actually, that I mean, it's that's just how writing works. Sometimes it's like, okay, all of a sudden this beginning just doesn't work. So let's let's rewrite it. Exactly. <laughs> let's rewrite the whole thing. And that's where some, you know, being a producer who who can write, when you because as a producer, you're always problem solving. So it was yeah. this with this problem. But once we had that and we understood that it could be done, and we weren't just gonna, you know, have to dust the film off in two years when we got more money, I literally on the blood sweat and tears literally patrick dug ditches to get the money to film the 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 beginning and end of this um and, you know and get the crew back together and, and get everybody paid and, and you know everyone back to edmonton so that we could shoot hire hire the other actor in the um in the interrogation scene um he literally dug, went and dug ditches for about six months. Oh wow! <laughs> in order for us to 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 shoot the end and you know and finish the film, so definitely blood, sweat, and tears. Def definitely a, a, a labor of love, um, especially on Patrick's part. But as I said, this was a, this is a story that has been he's been carrying around with him for a long time that he's wanted yeah. to to. He, to he get was out finally there. able to get it like. To, to get it off his chest essentially and I mean exactly. what, once you start you can't really just say oh well we can't finish this so like that's just not an option so I completely understand that exactly <laughs> oh man so switching over to the acting side because I know you you probably have other things that you want to do today <laughs> it's already been a half an hour I'm sorry um no, sorry. can you describe kind of what influenced you to pursue just acting even like as a part of your career you know yeah so acting came first for me okay. um and then the idea that 
you know, most people tell actors you should have a fallback career. I wasn't terribly interested in, um, but I realized that if I were going to have a fallback career, having one inside the industry would be great. Yeah. I, 100% wrong on that, by the way. No, okay. because you know when the when the ind when the industry if something happens in the industry, you know I had I have no second backup plan. Yeah, nothing that takes me away. But you know, it seemed like a great idea when I was like 15. Um, my dad was also an and both my mother and father were actors. Um, and my dad was uh, in Inherit the Wind on Broadway and. Um, and did a bunch of stuff like that. And I always knew I wanted to be an actor, even before I think I, I knew exactly what it meant. But the idea of, of um, telling stories by creating characters that people could connect with yeah. was always something that excited me. And then as I, uh, as I grew up, <laughs> and uh, moved more into the entertainment industry, I realized that um, there were other ways where I could help that story along and continue to help that connection with people. You know, I, I always love finding ways for people to sort of realize that regardless of how different we think we are under, underlying all of that, there's these just similarities to being a human being, having a human experience um, that uh, allows for a connection so that it maybe doesn't matter quite so much if we don't live in the same space or have the same amount of money or look exactly the same. Yeah. Um, and I think that that has pushed me, you know, in acting, but then also in the in the other areas, uh, writing, producing, whatever they'll let me do. <laughs> um, so I mean, it's 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 almost like um, being an actor allowed you to try on different hats, like in your real life too. Yeah, for sure. I think there's a, a there was always a sense of uh, because I was acting from a young age even if that was in my basement with no one watching. <laughs> I was brilliant, by the way. Oh, yeah, um, there was always this sense of, I can do that. Or I, you know, if I believed in it uh, enough, there's a way forward in that career or in that realm. So um, it was never this idea or not idea, but this, it was never a block to me of like, oh, I don't know what that is. I would just sort of say, well, it, if I did know what that, what it was, what would I do first? You know, as a writer, it wasn't, it wasn't like I, I was like, oh, I'll be a writer. It was like, well, this story needs to be written. So if I were a writer, what would I do first? I'd probably get out a pen and piece of paper. Great. <laughs> Let's do that. <laughs> Check. <laughs> Step two. <laughs> Stare at an empty page for two hours. Good. I mean, Check. that is an important part of writing, I must say. <laughs> Yes, and if you try work. to push through that too fast. <laughs> exactly. People always ask me like, oh, how, what, what is writing like? And I'm like, well, do you want the long version or do you want the short version? Because either way, we're talking about staring at the screen <laughs> for like two hours without anything happening. <laughs> exactly. It's like people ask me about film acting. What is film acting like? And it's, there is a lot of hurry up and wait. Yeah. In film acting, in writing, there's just a lot of hurry up and stare at a blank page. Oh yeah, that's one of my favorite parts. <laughs> <laughs> it's soothing, it's like meditation. It kind of is. It's like the the pre-writing meditation that you just go through. It's like, okay, I need to find the right music. I need to make sure my dishes are clean first. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, so as, as an actress, having done that from the beginning, um, what would you say is your most challenging role to date that you've done? Well, in some ways, this role in, in Broken, um, Sheriff Anna Kimball, was a challenge because um, it had... Being a sheriff, that kind of um, role um, was not something that I had done a lot of. Uh, I tend to, first, I tend to get cast um, a lot in comedies. Yeah. Um, 
And second, I tend to be cast as the sort of everyday uh, protagonist, the person that the audience um, sort of follows along through the story to, to kind of, you know, take you through. And in some yeah. ways, uh, Sheriff Kimball is that for for the audience, but in in some ways she's um, she's not. In some ways she's uh, sitting inside of this of someone else's story and trying to put a, a puzzle together. Um, so I think going into it, I felt like that was probably my uh, a more difficult um, character. But when I kind of stepped back and said, okay, you know, do the same things you do for any character, you, you know, get yourself into this, into this space where, you know, if I were, yeah. you know, if I were sitting in these circumstances and had had this life experience and these things were coming up, how would I react? And once you get that into, well, for me anyway, once I get into that space, then it becomes, characters become pretty easy. So it, it, some, in some ways it's looking at it and saying, you know, I think that's going to be hard and then stopping myself from, from going, yeah, it's definitely going to be hard because of course then it will be. And just stepping into the character and allowing myself to, to do the process that I know to do. Um, so as Sheriff Anna Kimball, um, obviously she comes across as, as far as like later in the movie, she comes across as a very small town cop with a, just, you know, we find out later and she has a, a background training in an FBI uh, agent training, essentially. Um, so it seems like she has a really pristine eye for detail. Yeah. Um, and honestly, I can say that I, I really love that about the character because you, you don't realize until obviously it, it's revealed at the end, like, oh, that's, that's why she's so like, you know, focused on these small things that a lot of people would miss, you know, um, that's, it's kind of like that, that hidden talent that looking at a person like that, that they're, they're wasting their talents on such a small thing. But, um, I, I feel like that just spoke more of her character, um, or your character rather, <laughs> your, your character that you play. Um, it's, it's almost like she was not meant to be in that, you know, larger kind of setting and that her skills needed to be somewhere where, you know, it's, you know, small town area, even though not much happens in that kind of a place, it's, you know, you still need someone that can do the job. And I, I feel like that was a perfect choice like, as a writer to have that um, just really solid character in that position. Um, speaking from personal experience and totally out of the realm of what I just was talking about, <laughs> I'm perfect at transitions. Um, do, you, <laughs> do you have an Love interest it. like at all in like true crime, anything like that, that kind of you pulled from at all? So there are uh, a couple of things I pulled from that kind of dovetailed really nicely into this. Um, one is I do I, I do have a, a soft spot in my heart for forensic files. That is my that is like uh, you know um, when I'm working and I'm I'm in a hotel room by myself and waiting for soup room service after working fourteen hours. I'm. Uh, I'll flip that on as sort of that soothing background noise, which is ridiculous given the details of what they're talking about. Um, so that's that permeated my being. Yeah. Um, and also when you're when I was writing these characters and 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 of course Patrick had an overall layout of of who these people were, but um the sheriff was someone that I was lucky enough to be able to flesh out first as a writer and then as an actor. Um, I, lo I look at ways, th once we know where, how, what they're doing in the story and how they're going through, I always like to look for ways or reasons that they're in there, believable reasons that they are, you know, that they didn't just say, see ya and I'm out. 
Um, and this idea of someone who has a very astute eye for detail, who is often hyper aware in spaces, um, partially by training, partially by, you know, who she is or who they are, um, really kind of called to me. And then this, the idea of, and because I recognize this a lot in myself is of the, you know, just whatever needs to get done has to get done. So I'm going to do it sort of aspect the, of the, you know, uh, of that, of her character where she's, you know, she's in a position where she sees a thing, she could ignore it. She could just chalk it up to serendipity or you know, coincidence. And yet there's a drive in her to, to solve this puzzle, to understand. And as, as she sees, she finds more and more just random pieces of a puzzle that don't seem to fit together. Instead of saying, well, maybe these don't fit together. She's more driven to say, no, there's, there's a picture here if I can just find the right pieces. Um, and that's something that I have in common a little bit with, with her. So was fun for me in the writing aspect to get that all out and on paper. And a lot of it was backstory. And then when I went back in, um, and, and, and rewrote the beginning and end to include this, I was able to spell out her backstory a little bit more so that the audience was able to kind of understand why she went on the ride she did and how that became the sort of the through line for the film. So you, you talked a little bit about how it was for you preparing this role. Um, and I mean, it's, it's always something that I feel we're maybe more able to ascertain for ourselves um, what we are personally capable of doing. Um, how, how was this role for you? Like, do you, did you feel like you were going to be able to do it justice? Like, did you feel like you were, you were suited for it? And if you didn't feel like you were suited for it when you went into it, how did you feel after? So it was really an interesting sort of flow of coming into the role itself. Um, it was written older in male when we, when we first wrote it. Um, even in the first uh, telling of the story, he, he, the, the actor who created the role was older male, um, kind of small town and, and really upped the small town aspect. Much different, same story, much different script and all of that. Um, so when we were coming into uh, to do this version, Patrick just one day said, oh, you'll be playing the sheriff, as though I would know this already. <laughs> and I was like, I'm obviously. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> Um, and, and, and there was a certain amount of agita in me, like, what? I didn't, I didn't write this for me. I don't, I wrote, what? Um, and then I kind of took the step back and said, all right, well, I'm always telling actors to, to trust their director and trust casting. So I am going to take the big leap and trust Patrick and, and trust this casting and, um, and look at it you know, from the realm of not having written it, like had it, had somebody else written it and brought it, you know, and I'd been cast in it, I, you know, and look at it in that way and start to find the places where what, who she was on paper connected with who I was and, and then start to build the character from that aspect. You know, she and I are similar in these ways. So, you know, build that up and allow myself. And then obviously, you know, you just at some point have to say, well, script says she says that. So I'm just going to have to figure out a way to make that make sense within this character. Um, had a lot of arguments with the writer. Myself <laughs> in a corner. <laughs> no. Um, that, <laughs> that became, so it, that became a way of opening up the character for me 
because as the writer and producer, I had such a different idea in my head of what of what this character was um, that having, you know, like just compartmentalizing and putting that away and then coming at it much as I would any other role um, was was actually, I think, really helped um, what ended up on screen. Um, I think that if I had not done that process, and it may be why earlier when you'd asked me, um, you know, what what was uh, the hardest role for me, and I said at some at some point, or at least at the beginning, this was. I think that was part of it until I until I laid down my expectation as a yeah. writer and as a producer of what I thought this role would be, um, until I laid those down and just picked up the role as an actor. Yeah, it was it was always going to be hard. Um, but then once I was able to get into it from an actor's perspective and start pairing who I am and, you know, what's in my wheelhouse as an actor with what this character was, I was able to really um, open up and, and, and own it. And Patrick was, as a director, was incredibly supportive of allowing me to make it my own um, and still kind of, you know, nudging me back in when I got a little off course. Um, I, I, like I said, do a lot of comedy. So he'd be like, that's not a funny line, Laura. Stop, <laughs> stop making that funny. <laughs> and nine times out of 10, I could do it. Sometimes I'm like, I'm not trying to, but you know, he <laughs> kept me on course without narrowing the road down so much that, um, that I couldn't play. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Oh man. So <laughs> I've already kept you for like 45 minutes here. <laughs> um, so is is there anything else about this movie that you'd like people to know? Like what was special about this project for you um, that you you think people ought to know going, not even going into this movie, but learning it later, you know? Yeah. Um, so much about this project was and is sort of, I know I've said it before, but 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 close to my heart, um, the people that came together to create this just really supportive and amazing. And we were we lucked out pretty much in every area that we could. We we lucked out with, you know, in some ways we we lucked out with not getting the first location. We were going to shoot it somewhere completely different and and having to, to go into Edmonton. We lucked out with our cinematographer who Patrick and I had both worked with before, David Puff, and his vision and what he brought. We lucked out with, with the casting and who we were able to find because of where we were um, with Brithin and Katrina and um, Ashraj. And just, we lucked out with our crew and their ability to sort of, do what needed to be done and really be supportive and, and throw their hat in the ring and, and just keep everything moving along. We lucked out, strangely, we lucked out in, in losing our funding and having to rewrite the beginning and end of this. Um, so a lot of luck and a lot of just a really amazing people. And I, um, you know, you always say, oh, this is an ensemble movie, but this really was an ensemble movie all the way through. The crew, the cast, post-production, the, the amazing people who were willing to come in on this very low budget and, um, you know, and, and help us out and, and uh, with that. So I think one of the things, and, I, and one of the things I always say about films is look at, take inspiration from, I hope people really see how much hard work and um, creativity went into this project. Um, and the other thing I think that I hope that people take away from this is, is the idea that you don't, you don't know what other people are going through. I think that this film, a lot of this film is about loyalty and a lot of this film is about trying to make the best choice when you only have bad choices. Um, how do you make the best bad choice? Uh, and I hope that people walk away with at least some thought of, you know, maybe I don't always, you see something from the outside and you're like, yeah, that just, that's just bad. Um, maybe you don't 
have all of the information or maybe you don't know exactly what's what's going on inside the story um, for someone else. And I hope people kind of take some of that away too. I, I think it's it's interesting because um, and honestly, it just kind of occurred to me when you're saying, you know, make the best bad choice. Um, most most I feel most scripts that would contain this kind of a, a situation where, you know, the protagonist's life is being threatened if they don't. Um, I feel like they would just go on like a killing rampage and like protect everyone. It's that's that's not realistic. Like I I enjoyed the part of this movie that it all seemed very, very uh, just, I mean, obviously it's realistic, but it just, it just seemed like something that could happen to someone if they were, you know, in, in that situation where, you know, everything's happening wrong, like everything yeah. bad is happening. And, yeah. and, and that's how we get, you know, people that are otherwise good people that are doing bad things. Like, um, so I mean it's it's not an action movie in the way that it's like oh I'm gonna you know I'm gonna go after bear you know yeah right. obviously that's... yeah it's like that's that's not really possible when you're you know that small person in comparison um you know there's the intimidation factor there's you know the the self-preservation that's spoken a lot of in that movie um and I I think it's it's very relatable. I mean, maybe not on that scale for most people, but it's it's a very relatable feeling to only have bad choices and to have to make the best one. Like it's it's something that a lot of us have to deal with. Um, it's a, I completely agree with you. It, it is something, and you know, you probably are not going to be making a movie uh, about somebody making the best bad choice in in small ways in a in a in a you know very contained life you know when you're out of when out when you you're out of groceries and don't want to go to the store what do you do you may not make the best movie but that ha having to make choices like that and decisions like that is what allows i hope the viewers to you know come along for the story and and understand and connect with um, Brian and with his, you know, the, these the kind of choices that he ends up having to make because you're you're both always making choices in a vacuum and never making choices in the vacuum at the same time and and that's kind of part of what he's facing is he you know he wouldn't make that final choice that he makes if he hadn't had to make all these other choices along the way exactly um, he would never jump to Z. Yeah. which I think sometimes happens in a lot of, like you were saying, in, in, in a lot of movies, they make the initial choice and it's suddenly bloody rampage. <laughs> and there's like, how, that, how did that happen? Yeah, I think exactly. this movie kind of really lays out, not that there is a bloody rampage, just for people who are like, yeah. I didn't see the movie she's talking about. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not taken, for example. Like we're, exactly. we're not... You know, taking measures into our own hands and going and you know, <laughs> revenge. <laughs> um, revenge. There's no Paris. So. <laughs> oh man, it was so awesome to talk to you, Laura. Um, I really you. appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. Um, again, I appreciate you being here today. I think I've kept you long enough. It's been an hour and a half. <laughs> I appreciate this. <laughs> I'm not usually long-winded and I always feel like I'm not asking enough pertinent questions, but then it ends up being an hour long. So <laughs> exactly. So it's all working out. Right. Well, thank you so much. Um, I'm going to head off and drink more coffee. All right. Well, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank <laughs> Take you. Care. Bye. Bye.